When it comes to dependency injection, there's two types of injection that you can do, or typically there's two types, two types that I even know about. Number one is field injection. This is kind of the simpler way to do things. There's not as many limitations or uh, required workarounds that you need to get it done. It's kind of like the simple way. I guess that's the way to think of it. The second way is constructor injection. And constructor injection is the way you definitely want to do it whenever possible. You definitely want to do constructor injection over field injection whenever possible. The main reason for that is with constructor injection, Injection, you're passing parameters through the constructor therefore when that object gets instantiated you know exactly what that object needs this is great for your production code you know if you instantiate an object you're passing it to the constructor you need to pass the things that it needs to work properly also when you're testing so if you're writing tests if you're building mocks you're building fakes when you know what that object requires it becomes much easier and this is kind of one of the the most important core concepts of dependency injection or why you use dependency injection in the first place so in this video what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you examples of both i'm going to show you field injection kind of what it is how to use it with hilt i'm going to show you constructor injection how to use it with hilt and how to set up your activities your fragments uh, whatever classes that you're going to be injecting dependencies into when you're using Hilt. Okay, so if you've been following along, in the previous video, we set up our application class. We annotated it with at Hilt Android app and got all of our dependencies that we need to get started using Hilt. So we can close the application class. Now we're going to go into main activity and I'm going to declare some dependencies and we're going to field inject them into main activity. So first things first, we need to annotate this with a special Hilt annotation. It's going to be Android entry point. Now this is a new Hilt thing. So for those of you who are familiar with Dagger, you did not have access to this annotation when, when using Dagger. So what this does is it basically, basically replaces the need to declare um, main activity as something that you can inject it into in the component. And I'll give you an example. So if we go back to, I'm just going to go to some other source code that I worked on in the past where I was working on, I uh, used Dagger in this project. So if you're familiar with Dagger, you know that you had to declare like this app component. And by the way, if you're not familiar with Dagger and you have no idea what I'm showing you on the screen here, don't worry. It's not necessarily important. I'm just trying to show this to the people who do have experience with Dagger. So remember, you have like your app component, you have like some dependencies, some modules, the, the factory pattern to instantiate it, whatever. Then down here, if you wanted to inject anything into main activity or into any fragments or anything, you had to add this kind of inject function and add that that class to the Dagger graph so that you can inject things into it. So what this, this um, Android entry point does here is it basically removes the need for that. So much like in our application class, we just added this simple annotation so that it generates a component, kind of gets everything started. It's the same kind of thing with this Android entry point. So we just annotate this with Android entry point and we don't have to add this. This basically adds it to the dagger graph so that now I can inject dependencies into it. That's essentially what it does. So now for those of you who have no dependency injection knowledge, let's declare some dependencies and actually inject these into main activity. So I'm just going to build like some random class. I'll just call it, I'll just do like class, uh, you know, some class and to, to mark this as something that is injectable or to add this as a, as a dependency for dagger or for hilt, we mark the constructor with at inject. So I'm going to do at inject then add a constructor. I'm not gonna pass anything to the constructor. I'm just simply adding it so I can get rid of these spaces if that's confusing you. I'm not gonna extend anything. I'm just gonna open this up. And there we go. We have a class that is gonna be supplied by Dagger because it has this inject on, on the uh, constructor. So I'm gonna create a simple function inside of this class, say do a thing. It's just gonna do a thing. It's gonna return some string and I'm gonna write return, look, I did a thing. So this dependency isn't doing much. It's just a class that has a single function. When that function is called, it's gonna return a string. So now I'm gonna come up into my main activity, annotate this with add inject, do late init var, and insert my, uh, some class, that dependency that I just declared. So, so what have I done here? I've created a class, just like some random class, not important. I've annotated the constructor with add inject. I've now done, this is called field injection. So field injection. Uh, as opposed to constructor injection, which we haven't looked at yet. And I'm injecting this into main activity as a dependency. Now, so what Dagger does in the background is it's going to instantiate this class and kind of hold it in memory so that it can be injected and used by other classes. And that's what's happening here in main activity. So if I go down here and I just write like print line and I'll write, um, it doesn't really matter. I'll just write, you know, some class, which is the dependency and call do a thing. 
Now, if I was to run this, I'm gonna press the play button up here. And if we take a look at the log output, what we should see is look, I did a thing. Okay, so I've pulled out the log, I filtered on look, and there it says system out, look, I did a thing. So that means that our dependency is working correctly. So this might not seem that amazing to you, but there's a lot going on behind the scenes. What, because what it's what's Dagger doing? It's it's creating this dependency at compile time, and it's it's making it available to me at runtime, and then I can inject it into classes and I can use it. So this is one this is one type of dependency injection, field injection. Now we're going to look at the second type, which is constructor injection. So I'm going to create another class. I'm going to scroll down here and create another class. This will just be called you know some other class. It doesn't really matter. Again, I'm going to annotate the constructor with at inject to tell Dagger that this is going to be a dependency. You need to generate this object at compile time because I need it. I'm going to be using it. Um, that's a habit to, for me to uh, make that constructor big because usually you're passing things. I'll just keep it small now because we don't have any arguments. Now I'm gonna create another function called function do some other thing. It's gonna do the same thing kind of return a string. So do return look I did some other thing and I'll do exclamation mark. So now what we're gonna do is pass this class as a dependency to this other class. So inside of the constructor I can write private, uh, whoops that's not the constructor, uh, up in the constructor, I can write private value some other class and get a get a reference to that class. So what I just did there, this is considered constructor injection. When you have a dependency like this one, we know it's a dependency because it's marked with add inject on the constructor. And then I pass that argument to the constructor here. Now you might be wondering, you know, how, how does this object getting passed here? Because we're never actually instantiating the object anywhere. We're just like literally passing it as a constructor argument. Well, what's happening behind the scenes is at compile time, Dagger is doing all of this for you. It's gonna create an instance of some other class. It's going to build that. Then it's gonna create an instance of some class and pass that instance of some other class to the constructor here. So what we can do is create a function in here. Function, I'll say do some other thing. Do some other thing, it will also return a string. Now this one will return some other class dot do some other thing. So I'm getting a reference to the, the function that's in that other class and I'm going to, going to use it. So now I'm gonna come up to the top here and do print line. I'll do some class dot do some other thing. And what we should see in the log is first of all, look, I did a thing. And then after that, we should see, look, I did some other thing. So let's uh, let's run that and take a look at the log output. Oh, whoops, look like, looks like I got a typo here. This should be print line. Print line, I'm gonna run that and uh, we'll take a look. So there's the log output filtering on look. I get look, I did a thing. And then look, I did some other thing. So I'm sure that if you have no experience with Dagger, this is gonna look quite confusing to you, also pointless because this is like a very abstract example, like what is some class and what is some other class? What's the point of that? Don't worry about that. If you're confused, just kind of put that to the side for now. The thing that I wanted you to really notice here is just the difference between field injection, which is this type of injection up here. We have inject, it has to be a late init variable, not a value, and then just the class and the and um, constructor injection. So constructor injection is then passing it through the constructor. All I wanted you to know is the difference between those two things. And then of course, if we want a class to be um, to be able to have dependencies injected into it, we have to annotate it with Android entry point. Those are the three point things that I wanted you to see and just kind of understand or grasp. So don't worry if you're confused about the rest. In the next video, I'm gonna talk about scoping and the tier-like system of the different scopes and the different components that Hilt makes available to you. Also, if you haven't yet, go to codingwithmitch.com, register an account, join the mailing list, and you'll get notifications for when new um, new videos and new courses are released. Also, this course, if you're watching it on YouTube, you can watch it on my website. And uh, in my opinion, it's much easier to watch it on my website because it'll track your progress. It'll keep track of like, did you watch this, this video? How far did you get in that video? And then it'll just generally keep keep track of it, of the whole course as a whole, as opposed to YouTube, which is just a playlist. So go do that if you haven't, and I'll see you in the next video.